Will Disney Pixar be able to reel in even more viewers with this re-release? You're watching Beyond the Trailer's review of Finding Nemo 3D. My son was taken away from me. Your son Chico? Nemo. Right, got it. Somewhere beyond the sea, somewhere waiting for me. about Nemo, that little guy sure can't swim far. At the box office, stateside Finding Nemo is the second most successful Pixar film to date and the fourth most successful animated film overall. So when Disney found themselves with a surprise hit with The Lion King 3D, it's no wonder that Finding Nemo is one of the films they rushed into production to capitalize on this 3D re-release trend, along with Beauty and the Beast, Monsters, Inc., and The Little Mermaid. But perhaps Disney was a little overzealous and didn't realize that only one 3D re-release can be king. The 3D version of Beauty and the Beast, the first animated film ever to be nominated for Best Picture, still failed to bloom at the box office, taking in just about half what The Lion King 3D did. Yet the industry is still hopeful for Nemo's prospects, with some even predicting that Ellen DeGeneres will be the belle of the box office this weekend instead of Mila Jovovich. And there's some logic to that, considering that Beauty and the Beast was largely overexposed, with a musical, two sequels, an IMAX re-release in 2002, and a DVD release just two years prior. In contrast, Finding Nemo's exposure is relatively small, with a definite yet only modest presence at Disney theme parks, a single DVD release, which is still available, and no sequels. That's right, Monsters, Inc. is getting a sequel before the more successful Nemo. That's because Nemo's writer director, Andrew Stanton, bet it all on John Carter and lost. So rejoice, Nemo fans, as Stanton has admitted that because there's no way now he's making John Carter 2, all he's got left is Finding Nemo 2. Not a bad consolation prize, and hey, live action isn't for everybody. Is Finding Nemo 3D? These 3D re-releases usually mean that a Blu-ray release is not far off, and indeed Finding Nemo will debut on Blu-ray this December. With that in mind, will audiences just wait a few months and watch it from the comfort of home? Disney is hoping the novelty of seeing Marlon and Dory actually swimming in your face will be enough to lure you into the theater. But then Disney has fooled us before with these supposedly 3D re-releases. Let's go find out. Because I went to a different theater yesterday to get the master, I was unable to cover Resident Evil Retribution and Finding Nemo 3D. I didn't want to miss both of them, so last night I went to see Finding Nemo 3D so I could do a little something different today and uh, give a review myself. Uh, and I have to say, I'm so glad that I did. I haven't had a, that good a time going to the movies in a very long time. Uh, it, it was just so much fun. Uh, first off, I totally forgot that uh, in front of the film was a new Toy Story short, Party Source Rex. And it was just amazing. It was so well done. It was so much fun to be in the theater. It was like being at a party, like at a rave. And uh, I was so impressed with uh, at the speed that the short moved. Uh, I mean, we're talking about such a fast story, such fast edits. And it, I think it's really a, a credit to how, how much our uh, attention spans and our uh, attention to detail has evolved with the internet and uh, all these new forms of media because uh, I don't think you would have been able to make a short that was that, was that fast paced uh, you know even maybe even 20 10 years ago so I think it was just such a reflection of our of our times so I thought that that was really interesting so I just had such a great time watching that short and I think honestly when it was done I feel that that is worth the price of admission to see Finding Nemo 3D and then seeing Finding Nemo again is kind of like an awesome bonus uh, so let's go to Finding Nemo 3D uh, the most obvious question is how 3D is it uh, it, it's a it's a complicated answer I would say on one hand uh, nothing comes out at you. This is not like the Despicable Me 2 trailer where, you know, the, the party blower comes out at you. That, that does, nothing like that happens at all, which I was a little disappointed about. I thought, you know, you have fish swimming in the ocean. This is just the perfect opportunity to really pop them out like a theme park. And uh, one of the things I've been saying lately is that I've been talking about it in an interview the other, uh, last week, and I talked about the fact um, that, you know, 3D with Hollywood is really difficult because they want to have their cake and eat it too. They want to be able to have a movie that you can see in 3D, but yet you can also see it in 2D. So they don't really, they don't really pop anything out or really go for broke. Uh, but I thought with Finding Nemo 3D, it's only in 3D. That's the whole purpose of its existence. So why not go for that theme park level? Why not have things like really get in your face? Because we know that they can do that. Uh, that said, maybe it can't be done when you're uh, doing something in post-production 3D. I don't know. I don't know the answer, but you're not going to find it here. That said, though, uh, on the other side, what was so fascinating 
about this movie was that the 3D, for some reason, made it like so much more clear and gave me such a deeper and greater understanding and appreciation for the animation work that Pixar did. Uh, the exact opposite happened to me with the Lion King 3D. With 2D hand-drawn animation, 3D just really emphasized how little detail that there is in hand-drawn animation. It just became almost like a coloring book come to life to me. And it lost a lot of its special qualities, in my opinion. I, I really didn't think it worked. Uh, but with uh, Pixar, uh, is pic I, and I didn't see Toy Story 3D, by the way, but with Finding Nemo 3D, I saw things that I had never, I've seen, I think I've seen Finding Nemo like three times, uh, like maybe once in the theater and twice on DVD, uh, and that, you know, of course when I was very little when it came out, so maybe I wouldn't have noticed it then, but because of the 3D, I was able to notice uh, detail on like the tank that they're in, you know, you, I noticed the grime that had been animated in, uh, I, I noticed, you know, bubbles much better, uh, I, it, it was just, it was just so impressive and it made it seem so much more real. And also, another thing that really drove this film home for me was that I had fish for a while, goldfish. And uh, I had the goldfish since seeing the, you know, before seeing the movie, at least the second or third time. But for some reason, because it was 3D and there was a depth of field and I was kind of like punched into the story a little bit, even though it wasn't punched out at me, because I was punched in, it really reminded me of my goldfish. Like, uh, Nemo reminded me so much of a, a goldfish I had uh, named Albert Finney. Uh, and it, it was just crazy. And so it brought back that memory and that connection. Unfortunately, very sadly, Albert Finney died. Um, but, so that brought some emotion back to me when I was watching the movie. But also, beyond that, the story for some reason, maybe it's, I don't know why, because as I said, I've seen this movie three times, but for some reason, watching the movie in 3D, I just felt more connected to it, and the story really resonated with me this time for the, for the first time. Uh, before, it had always been a fun story, an adventure, but I really started to see, like, the the message behind the film and, you know, the, the, the drama and the tension of a, a father and a son reaching out for each other across, you know, the ocean. And um, I know it sounds silly to have a film like this have such a different experience, but I really did. Uh, so I, I can't recommend going to see Finding Nemo 3D highly enough. Uh, you're going to have such a great time in the theater. And coupled with the Finding Nemo 3D feature, this Party Source Rex short, and then even the Wreck-It Ralph trailer at the beginning, it was just it was a party from beginning to end. It was just a really memorable evening. And I'm so glad to see Disney animation kind of like back on top. Uh, you, you know, I know this was Pixar, but to see where it's going and to see Wreck-It Ralph that's coming from the Disney side, uh, it, it's just fantastic. And the whole thing underlines, I think the second time I had this much fun, and I had a great time in Avengers. That was also a lot of fun. Uh, so I think the, my top three movie-going experiences, like I just had like an amazing fun time this year so far, are the Avengers, uh, Finding Nemo 3D, and the Lorax. And I think that uh, family entertainment is just so stepping up its game that I hope that I hope I hope some Oscar contenders do the same. I'm seeing the Masters tonight myself. We'll we'll see uh, how it goes. Yesterday, check out that episode to see what audiences thought of it. They they have a mixed reaction, but I'm excited to see it tomorrow. And I, I hope I have some of those moving experiences in the fall with uh, these Oscar contenders. But wow, this is why family entertainment, family animation, is doing so well at the box office because it consistently delivers a great time and a moving time. It's just, it's just firing on all cylinders. So you can see I'm enthusiastic about Finding Nemo 3D and Party Source Rex and uh, Wreck-It Ralph trailer, the whole package. Uh, if you've seen it, did you have as good a time? And, uh, I, and I hope you go see it if you haven't seen it. I, I really think it's worth catching in theaters. So uh, thank you for coming to be on the trailer. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this different kind of review. Uh, let me know. Let me know your thoughts. And uh, as always, I hope you go beyond the trailer for these other top movies. Bye.